Hi everyone, um, we're the Bridge Builders of Diversity and today's Hiya. topic um, might be a little heavy for some, it's about it grief and um, our friend Eva just recently passed away and her sister has Down syndrome so we thought this would be a perfect topic to discuss about the grieving process for people who have developmental disabilities. And it's good, at, um, I've got some good advice that I found. Um, that, that's really, it's good advice for everyone, really, I feel. Like, as I'm reading it, and the article was written by um, the team at the University of New Mexico School of Medicine. So shout out to the to them for writing this wonderfully presented article. Um, <clears throat> but the first, let me, let me, if you're not familiar with what they called in this, they refer to in this article, the, the tasks of grief. So in other words, it's like a, a job that you have to go through is the way they describe it. Kind of I like the always, stages of grief that they I talk always about. refer to it as the stages of grief. But then we start with denial. Oh, no, this can't be true. Then we move into anger. How dare they leave me? Um, then we begin bargaining. Like, what if I had done? What if? The, I call it the what ifs. You know, uh, what if I was a better friend? What if I was a better sister? What if I was a better mother? And then we move on to depression. This is just sad. I'm just sad. This is just sad. And then finally acceptance. Yes, I had a friend <laughs> and now she's gone. Um, oops, Excuse me. my sad is coming out. Um, but when the best advice that I read in this article was to be honest. When you're dealing with grief and an individual with a developmental disability, be honest. Don't try to hide it. Don't try to pretend that the loss hasn't occurred. You may want to wait to present the news. Um, I know that because some of the other advice given was rely heavily on loved ones and special people and keep them around. Because a, a, a lot like children in death, um, a person with developmental disabilities may worry about the remaining people in their lives. So make sure that they have them there with, with them and that they're checking in on them and, and showing them that they're still there, they're not leaving. Um, and you know, remember there's no right or wrong way to grieve. No, there isn't. And the, those, um, those tasks or stages of grief don't always happen in order. Um, and that was something that they, they said, you know, process over perfection. There is no right or wrong way to present this information to someone. There's no right or wrong way to grieve. There's, but there are, there are ways that you can make it softer and gentler because this is an inevitability. It is part of life. We will suffer loss. If you're a human being, you will leave this earth. I guess well, everybody does. I can only speak for myself as I know that I have a finite amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but carefully choose your initial statement. Try not to be um, too flowery. Um, try not to skirt around it and use too many euphemisms. Try to stick with language the person with developmental disabilities is familiar and comfortable with. Um, and also developmental appropriateness. Like, right. like my son, his best friend, when he was in preschool, died when she was four. My son was about four or five. Um, so I had to handle it at his age and his ability. You know, so even if you have an older adult with developmental disabilities, but, you know, maybe they're 15, develop, right. you know, they're take that into consideration in the conversation. Absolutely. Ta and take into, um, take into account their, their vocabulary and the words that they are familiar with. Try not to make it confusing because while you are being honest, you want to also make it easy to understand. I know that um, when I've had to talk 
to my friend's sister uh, about her, our, our deep loss. I, I, use, I use her religious beliefs to provide her with comfort. I use the words heaven. I use the words, we will see each other again. Um, those, that's her belief set. And um, that's what it provides her with comfort. So I rely very heavily on that when talking to her about our loss. Um, and the last thing, bit of advice that I feel is super important is give time. Don't expect them to get over it in your time. They're going, let them lead their grieving process. And again, these are tasks and stages of grief, but they don't necessarily follow in the same order um, and allow them to grieve in their own way. If they want to play the same song over and over again, or read the same book, or look at pictures endlessly until you can't take it anymore, give them time for that. Um, that was the best advice that I gleaned from this article and, and it hopefully did a good job. <laughs> yes, um, thank you. Yes, it's, a, it's an inevitability and it's something that, um, but don't expect their reactions to be like yours. Right, and it's also a good time to bring up um, with this topic to make sure you have care plans for your loved ones with disabilities ahead of time. Um, you know, our friend already has a care plan in place because um, the right, parents- but make sure that everything is very, very clear yeah. for those people left behind. Yeah. And if you have a child or a dependent with developmental disabilities, make sure that it is clearly spelled out and that you have people that, that you have talked to the people in your life that are going to be taking your place as a caregiver yeah. <clears throat> and they know exactly what their rights and responsibilities are and, and what to do in the event of your passing because it can be, it's a hectic and confusing time when there's a loss and it can be super scary. So we don't wanna be afraid of, you know, the, we want the basics to be covered. Yes, yeah. Need the basics to be covered. Who's going to be responsible for this? Who's going to be responsible for that? That's super, super important. And if you don't have a care plan, um, there are agencies that you can reach out to that will help you draw something up. It's very, very simple yeah. and can be done very inexpensively. Even something is um, like a handwritten letter will, mm -hmm. will hold up. So yeah. that way the transition is much easier on them. Right, right. And there's no fear and confusion. So, yeah. right, all right, guys, if you like our content, <laughs> please like, share, comment down below. We cover all topics with disabilities bridging that gap. I'm Sherry. I'm a mother of a child with Down syndrome, and Roberta is a special educator. I am. Together, we're bridge builders of diversity. We are building bridges through education and discussion and um, bringing you closer to the disabled community. And please so, hit that like button to help get us out into the cyber world. That would be great. Right. Appreciate it. Right. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.